Hey everybody, uh, this is Lisa, Prims on Greenway. Um, this is my floss tube number 20. Um, I have some notes here to try to keep me on track. Um, today is Sunday, August 22nd, 2021. And the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to say hello to all those people that are out at the attic uh, this weekend. I'm sure you had a wonderful time. I enjoyed looking at all the photographs on Instagram and um, all the beautiful haul <laughs> that you obtained, as well as the wonderful projects that were presented. I cannot wait to see them up close and personal on your videos and uh, see them all stitched up because they all looked very fun and gorgeous. So um, everybody safe travels back home uh, over this uh, weekend and uh, good luck with getting everything packed in your suitcases. <laughs> Hopefully you left a little extra room. Um, in addition, I would like to say thank you, of course, to all my subscribers, um, to all my new subscribers. Um, just to let you know, I'm not only here on FlossTube, but I'm also on Instagram, also as Prims on Greenway. Um, I would also like to uh, give a big thank you to Kathy from Primitive Homespun's Wool and Needleworks. Um, if you caught my last video, it was a uh, shop tour of her shop down in Frederick, Maryland. Uh, my family and I went down there just for a couple days um, for a little getaway. And um, I didn't pre-plan it, but when I got there, I said, hmm, let's check Google and see if there's any shops around. And sure enough, I actually found two. So she was one of them. Uh, let me start with her. I did do a, a shop tour. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go ahead back and check it out. She not only has wool, uh, but she also has cross stitch. Um, she has uh, patterns as well as fabrics. So definitely uh, give it a watch. Uh, if there's something you see you like there, please give her a call. If you're in the area um, vacationing, uh, stop by. It's a cute little shop, very well put together. They also have lots of wood items um, that I show in the video that her dad um, makes. So definitely, definitely check that out. The couple of things that I did obtain there, which I said in the video I was going to get, one <clears throat> is these scissors. Let me show you up close. These are Kay Buckley scissors. Um, what makes these scissors different um, is that um, they're kind of serrated. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that on the video but they have a serration to their edge, which means they cut through wool like butter. Um, I know the other brand that is very similar to this is Kai, K-A-I, um, but she had these in stock. I didn't have a pair, I was just using my Fiskars, which was working okay, uh, but I gave these a try. That's why they're out of the package. I didn't follow the rules on not taking things out of the package before I show them on my floss tube because I was working on a Maggie project, which I'll show you later, and I wanted to give them a try, and they do cut awesome. So these are K Buckley. They come in three sizes. There's a smaller size that's almost the size of maybe our um, scissors that we use for our needlework, um, and then there's a bigger size too, but I figured uh, as a start, I'll just go with the middle size, middle of the road, and see how they work, and they're absolutely awesome. So K Buckley scissors, uh, if you're gonna do any wool, um, give them a try. Give them a try and uh, they carry them at uh, Primitive Homespun's Wool and Needleworks. Call Kathy. The other two items that I got there were two pieces of wool. Um, this one's kind of um, a bit of a plaid. You can probably see it there a little bit. It's an army green with a little bit of a pinky red orangey kind of going through it. Um, I thought this would be great possibly uh, for a background uh, for a piece. Um, it's a good size, so uh, we'll see what comes my way. Uh, I don't often buy things without having something in mind, but um, these were a great price, so I, I got two of them. Uh, that was one of them. This one's kind of uh, brownish with uh, black stripes, if you want to call it a plaid or a check, I'm not sure. But again, I was thinking to myself, mm, could this be used at some point for a um, wool background? because uh, they were awesome prices. So so there you go. Um, that was my haul from that shop. 
And then the second shop, which I did not do a video for, was in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, uh, which is only about an hour from Frederick, Maryland. So if you're down visiting Gettysburg, it was an awesome place to visit. We enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, and I should have mentioned um, the reason we went to Frederick is that we visited Harper's Ferry. And that was also beautiful. Um, it was nice to see um, the original buildings, uh, the story of John Brown, and saw his original building that was his hideout that apparently has moved to several locations. It's amazing. It's an old brick building. building how they dismantle and rebuild a building, I think, is just crazy amazing. But anyways, it was fun. I digress. Um, so the other shop there in Gettysburg that I went to was called Needle and Thread. Um, and at this shop, this was more of a quilting shop. Um, so I did get a couple fabrics, which I will we'll show you. Again, I felt like they were uh, kind of Civil War-ish. And lately I've been uh, majorly into red. So I'm hoping this might show up there. I think that's pretty true. Um, so that was one of them. And this one says... This is, she carried all Marcus fabrics. I've never heard of that. Of course, I'm not a quilter, but she carried all Marcus fabrics. And this was uh, somebody, Roth or Mel. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Oh, Judy. Inkwell by Judy Roth or Mel. So there you go. Um, and this was in her clearance bin. I am a definite clearance shopper. Those wools were in the clearance bin. Uh, you can find nice things. Um, this one... I don't know if it says it on the um, the edging here, which I forgot what the edging is called. Um, I don't see, so I'm not sure on this one, but it's also a red, and it's a real fine, you know, this would be nice for a backing or inside of a bag or something along those lines. Uh, but both of them, they comp kind of complement each other. They're both on the red, the red scale. So this was from Needle and Thread. And the other thing, if you're down Gettysburg Way, the other reason, if you're even if you're not a quilter, the other reason to stop in there, way in the back of her store, she had about six or eight bins filled with cross-stitch charts. And they are older, and you can better believe I spent a lot of time going through them, seeing what I could find. And I thought they were 12 for five bucks. So I think that's less than 50 cents a piece. I don't know, 40 some cents a piece. So I did get 12 of them. And then for 50 cents, I found a treasure. So um, let me first show you um, the couple. I actually divided them up. Um, I'm not going to show you all 12 of them. Uh, there's a few I'm going to be sending uh, to uh, a couple people because I thought of them while I was looking through it. So I'm not going to show you those. Uh, these are the ones um, that I'm going to keep. And then there's a couple at the end I'll show you that I'm going to do like as a traditional giveaway if people are interested. So um, this first one is Waxing Moon Designs. And it's a little bit out of my, my wheelhouse, but um, I don't know if I ever said, but we have chickens here. So I just thought it was really cute. Um, it's called Hen Party, and you can kind of see the little chickens there. It says cluck cluck, um, and I thought that was super cute. So we'll see um, if I stitch it or not. Um, we'll just put it in stash for the moment. Um, I did get a heart and hand. These are called Simple Samplers uh, by Cecilia Turner, and I thought they were really cute. They would be make nice smalls, I think, uh, particularly if you're going to... Um, you know, possibly go to re retreat or you want to send some stitchy kindness to somebody, you know, that this little one in the corner could probably stitch up uh, in a half an hour. It's so tiny. Um, you could make it into a pillow or numerous other things, but um, I really liked this one. This was Heart and Hand Simple Samplers. Um, another one, this one's called, this is from Twisted Threads. It's called Itty Bitty Stars and Stripes. And I have to say, I really liked the stars. Um, the way she did it, it just kind of makes them look very vintagey. I don't know if you can see in the photograph um, how they're kind of, um, I don't know if she uses variegated, I didn't really look, or several different colors, but I kind of liked the little stars and thought, hmm, what could I do with those? Uh, we'll have to see on that one, but um, this is called Itty Bitty Stars and Stripes. And then the last one I picked up for myself was um, an old you and I friends called Patchwork Angel. I'm not sure if I'd make the angel, but I like the patchwork uh, with the um, buttons. Um, I'm hoping you can see this one because this is all 
packaged, but um, there it is. It's You and I Friends, and it's, it's kind of got patchwork with buttons, which I, I like that concept. Again, not sure what I would do with it, but um, I just like that, and heck, for 40 cents, why not, right? So those are, those are the ones I'm going to keep. And then the one that I thought was just the biggest bargain of all, I think I heard, I've heard Carol and maybe Lori, uh, Carol Salpock Stitcher and Lori Textilist talk about these. Um, these are called Needle Love Books, and they, they're a collaboration from several different designers. This particular one does have some patterns from Maggie Benonymy as well as uh, Blackbird Designs. Um, this particular one that was in this bargain bin, got it for 50 cents, was called Flower Bed Threads. Flower Bed Threads. And it's um, Needle Love uh, Designs. And um, there's bunches of different projects in here. Um, I have to say, I'm real tempted uh, to give this bird a try. I don't know, I've never kind of made anything like that. But I love it. It's it's kind of a sewing bird, and um, you can put your little scissors in there. I just think it's it's completely out of this world. But there are of course lots of other beautiful projects in here. Let's see if I can look at this bag. I thought that was super cute. Um, and here's a, a basket. Uh, let's see what else can I show you in here. Here is, they do have one cross stitch. It says, oh, my dear sweet friend. So they do have one cross stitch in here. I love this too. Um, it's kind of a posy type thing. Um, this is a cool bag where they actually took the wool and interwove it into a basket pattern, which I think is totally amazing. And then here there is um, a pillow and a quilt and a heart, just a bunch of different things. Uh, there's the quilt and the pillow. And we got another pillow here and kind of a heart type thing. So um, really neat. There's lots of neat things. And I, I have looked at these on the internet. And of course, they're out of print and they're quite pricey. So for 50 cents, I thought I was getting a steal on that. So again, if you're in Gettysburg, it's called Needle and Thread. Check them out. Make sure you go way to the back and you're going to have bunches of patterns to look through. They are older, but you never know what you might find in there. So awesome. Okay, um, next I think I will move on to my whips. Um, last time I had talked about my uh, Liberty Rose Baba flag sheep. Um, this one I can take, sorry for the crunching, I should have taken it out before. Um, this was the one that my friend Gail uh, surprised me with, and it was a full kit. I have completed all the stitching, and what I've decided to do with it is I'm going to make a long pillow with it. So um, I ordered from Amazon a pillow form, but it hasn't come yet. Um, usually they're very fast, but this one's taking a few weeks. But let me at least show you uh, my finished finished project here. Let me, I'm going to move this just so you can see what I got here. There it is. There's the finished, the finished piece. Isn't that cute? I just love it. I just love it. So cute, stitched up super fast. And um, when I make it into a pillow, I will show you. Um, my daughter absolutely loves sheep, so I think this is probably going to end up in her on her bed. So, um, so there you go. That was uh, again Baba Flag Sheep by uh, Liberty Rose, and it was a full pattern. And this was actually made with wool felt, as opposed to um, regular wool. And um, I found it very easy to work with, very easy to work with. So um, if you run across a pattern, don't be afraid because it says wool felt because it worked up uh, beautifully. Okay, cross stitch wise, I am working on um, a pattern from the Sewing Club book. I know you're all familiar with this book by Blackbird Designs. Um, remember, this is my year of the Blackbird, so I always uh, keep one on the go. And lately, I, I seem to have a cross-stitching pattern and a woolly pattern and a quilty thing going on. Now, this time around, I, I don't have a quilty thing because I'm anticipating, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm anticipating getting my quilt back from the um, quilters and probably having to put a binding on. So I think I'm going to hold on a quilty project till I get that back and get that done. 
But for right now, I um, am working on a cross stitch that actually it's a very small, I'm almost done with it. And I, it's called Garden Friends Sewing Bag. And it says Hollyhocks on the bottom. Actually, I thought that was the name of the pattern, but I was wrong. It's um, Garden Friends and it's super duper cute. Oh boy, and fabric wise, it is a 40 count. Hmm. I don't think I remember. I think I did put it in my Instagram though. If you check my Instagram, if you're that curious, um, check it out. Oh, you know what? Now I know what it is. It's country, vintage country mocha, and I made a huge mistake. Okay, everybody, you gotta gotta listen to this part. Vintage country mocha, I didn't realize, is printed only on one side. And when I got my whole thing set up, I started stitching and I flipped it over. I was like, oops, I'm on the wrong side. So the pretty side is on the back. So I don't know for sure if I'm going to do any kind of staining over the top of this or not because it's on the plain side of the fabric. But uh, it was vintage country mocha. Oh, and here are, here are the threads. Of course, they're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blackbird threads. Um, awesome colors. And it is getting close to being done but as I said I, uh, I goofed it up and put it on the wrong side of the fabric so beware if you're doing vintage country mocha please look at it very carefully uh, before you start stitching don't make my mistake I do tend to jump into things quickly at times um, I always like to have a cross stitch on the go and when I finished my last project I kind of just quickly gathered things up um, I do admire people who have things already kitted and ready to go. Um, I know Brenda and Laura do that a lot where they have their kitted projects and so they can go through them and start them like on a heartbeat. And I, I think that's a really good idea because sometimes when you do what I do where you're anxious to get something started and you just kind of grab, grab, grab and put it together fast, you're not thinking. So, um, yes, maybe I need to kit up a few things and have them ready to go. The problem is, is I change my mind so frequently. I, I think something's awesome, and then when it comes time to stitch it, I'm like, mm, nah, I don't want to do that. So, I don't know. Maybe Brenda would just say, that's why you have to have a big variety, right? Got to have things to choose from. So, anyways, there you go. That's my cross-stitching project. And then my wooly project uh, that I'm currently working on is a uh, Maggie Bonanomy, and it is from her book. Uh, I don't know if I've shown this one. Um, it's called Thistle Down Moon. Thistle Down Moon has gobs, just gobs of awesome projects. Um, I mean, just look at the ones right there on the front. I want to do all of them. Uh, gobs of gobs of projects, but this one really caught my eye, and this one is called Wall Hung Sewing Necessity. And look at this, guys. Is that not the cutest thing or what? It even has little strawberries hanging that I'm hoping I can do also. It has a little pocket, a little button pouch, and on the bottom there that's like a little pin cushion. Oh, so, so prim and so, so cute. Yep. And here I am. I'm a probably a good halfway, if not a little more, um, through this project. And here it is. Um, I didn't use the exact same colors. My This is linen. Uh, this is one of the linens that I got from Old Tattered Flag. Um, Maggie's in the book is a little more of a milk chocolate linen. This one's a little more kind of a black brown linen, uh, but I love it. Um, I just used, um, some of it I used wool. She, she called for velvet and fabric, but um, this is wool, this is wool, this is a piece of Osnaberg. Um, this is wool, these are all wool, but all the rest of this is fabric. So, if you look closely, I don't know if you can tell, I have done some needle turn applique, holy moly! And um, now that I've done a little bit of it, I've, I've gotten a little better. I actually started with the flower, which is super wonky. Look at how wonky that flower is. Um, I know if Olivia did her, the way she did it, uh, Appliquick, it would have been a perfect circle. But you know what, for projects like this that are very prim, I'm okay with it. To me, it gives it um, a little bit of character. So I'm actually okay with it, um, that it's wonky. And, and it was the first time that I'd ever even attempted it. So I thought, eh, for the first time, it came out okay. 
and uh, as I proceeded I got better and better the last thing I did was this which I thought came out pretty okay still a little bit wonky but um, I think that's the way it's supposed to be so so there you go I have embarked on needle, needle turn applique and I think it's absolutely awesome um, there some of the supplies that I I used for this I got from a friend that I'm gonna go into in a little uh, I'm gonna go into it further in a little bit um, but I have to say with the supplies this person sent me I just find this very enjoyable and very easy and very quick and um, I hate to say this I I've said it already that I kind of sometimes rush into things um, again I'm a product stitcher I want to see the end product so I, I like things that move along <laughs> <laughs> and so you're thinking, why was she ever a cross stitcher? Because it takes forever. I don't know. I don't know. I got into cross stitch first and stuck with it all these years, and now I'm getting into branching out a little bit, and um, I'm really, really enjoying it. So I'm hoping that this will be a completion, hopefully over the next week or so. Uh, we'll see how my time goes, but uh, so far I absolutely love this. So again, wall hung sewing necessity from. Uh, Maggie Bonanami's um, Thistle Down Moon. Um, beautiful, beautiful project. So that's what I have on the go right now. Um, and I'm enjoying all of them, enjoying all of them. Um, I would like to, I do have a finish um, that I'm going to show you in a minute, but I do want to go into um, a couple stitchy kindnesses quick. Um, one is from uh, Lori Textilist. Um, this was an adorable, well, first off, she sent me a fabulous card from um, Oregon. She lives in Sisters, and this is a card of the Three Sisters Mountain Range in Central Oregon, and it's absolutely awesome. Love the card. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. And then um, she made this fabulous little book, uh, which you could use. She mentioned using it possibly for um, an individual project as a journal. Um, the other thing I thought of is this could be um, part of a sewing kit. Um, if you made a bag and had a little pocket in it, um, it could be part of your kit where you do keep track of uh, what you're working on. Um, the other thing I thought of is this could be an autograph book, a Stitcher's autograph book for going to a retreat. Um, but the interesting part of this, I'm hoping you can see this, is this, she made this cover. This is sewn on a machine and um, this, this is an insert, but she made this cover. And at first when I opened it up, I thought it was some form of leather, but it's actually not. It's the material that is used on the tags on Levi's jeans. You know that brownish, tannish material and it has Levi's jeans, Levi Strauss, and, and it has the, um, has your size and all that jazz on there. That's what this material is. And she said you can buy it in all different colors and um, you can actually dye it, she said, which would be awesome. This is a beautiful deep brown. Um, so very interesting and um, wow, does that open up possibilities, doesn't it, uh, with a material like that. Um, Lori, you are dangerous. You keep showing me new things and I keep delving into new things. Um, she then attached uh, this beautiful little bee fabric um, and sewed those on and fringed them and then a uh, cute little bee uh, charm and this is just a fabulous little book. So thank you so much Lori for crafting something for me. That was so so nice of you to do that. I know it all takes time um, and uh, to gather everything and I so so appreciate it. So thank you so so much. So enjoyable and Hoping to meet Lori in person at the um, Quilter Station Retreat coming up in a few weeks. So that'll be fabulous. Um, and then the next bit of stitchy kindness is also just completely overwhelming. Um, this gal, Meg, um, contacted me several months ago uh, after I did my old Tattered Flag video. Um, she doesn't live uh, too far uh, and hadn't known about it and made a wonderful trip there and enjoyed herself. Um, and so while she was there, she actually picked up a few things for me. And then when she heard me start talking about learning needle turn applique along with Olivia B and Lori, um, she offered to make me a needle turn applique kit, um, which is absolutely fabulous. I've been using it for my Maggie Bonanami and all the materials are just perfect. And I just, 
feel like somebody who's been doing it for many, many years, they've honed the skill, not only the skill, but they've honed down to what needles, what thread, you know, what works the best. And so receiving that from her was such a huge gift because it was years of probably trying all different things to figure out what works best. And here it was gifted to me and I, I've used it and it is, it just makes it so easy. I just love it. So I, I do want to show you, um, this is the card Meg sent me with this beautiful peacock. Uh, Susan Stanley's all about peacocks. Here's a cool peacock card, Susan. Um, and here are some of the things she sent in the kit. Uh, one was kind of a thicker, I've never seen this either. This is by Papermate and it's a thicker, um, a thicker mechanical pencil for doing the tracing onto your uh, freezer paper. And so the line is very precise. Uh, really cool. Um, and then a friction pen. Um, so you can use that uh, to make the little line um, that you're going to turn it uh, on your fabric and it can be removed by just ironing. So that's awesome too. Um, she also said once in a blue moon she might put a dab of glue um, in the center, not along the edges. So she sent me a little bit of glue and then some um, binder clips or binding clips I think they're called, uh, which is fabulous. Um, and then she sent me a whole pack of applique uh, pins, which are nice and short, um, just perfect because the longer pins I was using, I kept pinning myself. These are much, much better. Um, and then the needles she sent are just out of this world. Um, these are called Jean Kimball's Fox Gloves Cottage Needles, and they're straw needles, size 11. Um, and here they are. I can kind of show you. I know it's not focusing very well, is it? Because it's too small. But these are fabulous, fabulous needles. I did, this is the one I've been using. I took it out. Um, so they're real tiny. The eye is real tiny, but you know what? Threading it was not a problem because she sent me a spool of her most favorite thread that she uses for needle turn applique. And it's by companies called YLI, and it's silk thread. 100 weight, I think, um, which is very fine. It's very, very fine silk. If you can see how fine that is. And so it's super easy to thread. The only thing I found, and actually I didn't ask her about this, but um, I kind of made this up, but maybe people do this anyways, is um, because it's silk, as you're stitching, sometimes it'll slip through, the needle will slip through, and I kept having to re-thread it. So I thought to myself, this stuff is so fine. I wonder if I just knotted it at the end, which I don't know if you can see on this or not, but um, I made a knot there right around the eye of the needle and it goes through, it still goes through just as easy. It doesn't get snagged or anything like that, but then it doesn't fall off. So I can stitch and stitch and stitch and stitch and it never falls off and I never have to rethread it. So awesome, Meg, this is just outstanding. This YLI silk is fabulous. It just melts right into the fabric. You hardly even see it. Even on the darker colors, you hardly even see it. Um, I don't know if I can maybe bring this up close, but I, I don't feel you, you see it very much at all. Um, it's just kind of barely there. Now on the wool here, I didn't do it as close to the edge because I wanted to be sure of the wool, but but on the fabric ones, you barely, barely just see it um, here. You can barely just see it. So, and when you come back here, you can't see it at all for sure. So I just love it. I just love it. Um, but that's not all. She sent me um, from her scrap basket, a huge bag of all kinds of scraps. And actually the fabrics that you see on there were from uh, these scraps. So thank you, because that gave me uh, so many other colors to choose from. I didn't have a ton of browns, and that was perfect for that. Um, and she sent me this beautiful bag. It says, Life is Better with Friends. And inside this bag is amazement. Um, one is a bag of uh, wool from the Old Tattered Flag. Look at those wools. Just, just beautiful. And then she sent me a cross stitch pattern. Uh, this one is Little House Needleworks Needlework ABCs. 
uh, which I know I've seen plenty of people stitch. I love it. It will look great in this room. Um, and she also sent all the flosses, all the DMCs to go along with it. So I think we're going to do a stitch along. So if there's anybody out there who's working on this or would like to work on it, come and join us. Come and join us. Um, these are some hand dyed um, flosses from Old Tattered Flag. They are just beautiful. Uh, there's a green, a brown, a red, and a gray. So just gorgeous, just gorgeous. And then this is amazing, guys. This is completely amazing. What this pack is, is this is a pack of Blackbird Design fabrics. Look at all these fabrics. And on each one of these, she also puts what collection they are from. For example, these two are Blackbird Designs Old Fashioned Charm. She'll put what collection they're from. Isn't that amazing or what? I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm overwhelmed. I'm completely overwhelmed with these. I am not sure. What, it's got to be something special. Here's Garden Party. Look at this one. Oh my goodness. Are these not delicious or what? Um, here's more garden party. Look at these colors. Amazing. Oh, oh, I'm just, you know, talk about uh, Laura and a heart attack and a hernia. This, this was a heart attack and a hernia. Uh, this was from Meadow, the collection Meadow. Look how beautiful that blue is. Oh my goodness. And what is this one? This is a stripe call from a collection called Beach House. Super, super cute. I am not sure my video stopped. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, I was showing the Blackbird fabric from Meg. Um, I want to again say thank you, thank you, Meg. But if that wasn't enough, I have to tell you something else. Meg does her own designs. And yes, she drew me a needle turn applique design. And um, I cannot wait to get started on it. Uh, as soon as I'm done with my Maggie pattern, this will be my next. And um, this is a hand-drawn design. We've got um, a moon, some stars, a beautiful house. We've got a couple a sheep and a tree and a grassy knoll and a little shed. It is fabulous. This gal is so talented. Holy guacamole. She also sent all the fabric to go with it. Every one of them is marked for what piece it should be. And look at these colors, guys. Is this out of this world or what? This lady needs to do a floss tube. She's, she's amazing. And in here is not only um, four pages of instructions, but freezer paper, all the pieces um, drawn on the freezer paper for me. Amazing. Talk about a kit. Holy moly. This is out of this world. I cannot wait to get started. As I said, as soon as I finish the Maggie project, um, I will be embarking on that. Can't wait to show you guys how this is going to come out. I think it's just going to be adorable. So cannot wait. Um, Meg, I'm not sure what to say. I'm just, again, overwhelmed. Thank you so, so much. Um, this is going to be a load of fun. Um, and one of these days we need to get together in person because we don't live all that far from each other. Um, so maybe, maybe somewhere halfway in between we can meet. Uh, but just love it. Just love everything. All right, um, and then um, getting right here to the end, I have a, um, a finish, and this is from my Ooh La La book, uh, Blackbird Designs, of course, and this is the Mon Petit exemplar. They show the original little um, sampler, and then they show it as a ditty bag. That's what I call it. They call it a sewing bag. I call it a ditty bag, and I've never made one before, so I took up the challenge, and here we are, guys. It's a little ditty bag. Um, I end up making a boo-boo. I didn't put the bottom of the sampler closer, um, as close as it should have been to the bottom of the bag, so instead, I just added a red button, and I think it looks great. So, boo-boos, you can turn, what is that, what is that saying? Um, lemons into lemonade? And that's what I did. I used some, um, uh, what is this called? This ribbon. I can't think of the name of it now. I'm blanking on the ribbon. Um, ah, 
I'm terrible. I, I can't think of the name of this ribbon, but I have a huge roll of it uh, that I'd ordered online. And then um, the bag lining's kind of a red, kind of florally type pattern uh, for the bag lining. Um, this was quite easy to do, and I'm thinking the hollyhocks will be another little ditty bag because I had so much fun making this. So, um, so that's my finish for this time around. And then the very last thing is uh, giveaway. I have four patterns um, that I'd like to give away. These are patterns I got off the um, off of the uh, oh my goodness the clearance bins <laughs> at Needle and Thread in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So the first one I've heard a lot of people say that they collect these patterns. So when I saw it, I I nabbed it, hoping somebody out there might like it. Um, this is a sheepish design. And it's Scarecrow Wabbit. Scarecrow Wabbit. It looks like it's a little pillow pin keep along with a little scissor fob. And that would be probably perfect for some fall stitching and pretty quick stitching. So if anybody out there is interested in this, please put in your comment, sheepish, sheepish. All right, and the next one is a shepherd's bush. Um, I know a lot of people stitch the um, shepherd's book stockings, and this has to be an older one. Um, I thought I had seen the copyright on this. Yep, 1996, and um, I, I'm assuming this is one that was made for one of the owners, because I think it's Tina and Terry, and this one says Terry. So maybe this was one of the originals. So if somebody loves Shepherd's Book stockings um, and would like this pattern, um, please put stocking in your um, comment. Stocking. Uh, the next one is a Rosewood Manor. And um, again, this is probably an older one. I don't know if there's a date on this one. 2001. Um, so this one's 10 years old. Uh, if there's anybody out there very patriotic, uh, likes to stitch words, this is the Star Sting star spangled banner star spangled banner so there we are star spangled banner and in the comments please put banner uh, for that one and then the last one is by bent creek and um, this one i picked up uh, because um, i'm a sampler girl this one is a very simple sampler i'm sure you can do lots of different things with this different colorways different finishes would stitch up super quick. This is called the Everyday Sampler by Bent Creek. Everyday Sampler. And for this one, just put sampler in the comments if it's something you're interested in. So there you go. Um, this completes my floss tube for today. Uh, lots of fun stuff to share. Um, thank you to everybody again for your support. Um, I appreciate um, all the encouragement you give. And um, please keep those comments coming. I also love interacting on Instagram and seeing all the things you create, which inspire me to create. I have to be honest, this morning I was watching um, Mama Loves GB, I think it's called, and um, she had shown these little hat pins that she um, made into little counting pins um, using little spools, which I thought was awesome. Oh, I might have to give it a try, we'll see too many too many crafty things not enough time right guys so i'm wishing you lots of crafty time and i can't wait to see what you create uh, stay safe and stay well until next time see you later guys bye i am not sure my video stopped i'm not exactly sure why um, i was showing the blackbird fabric from meg um, i want to again say thank you thank you meg but if that wasn't enough i have to tell you something else Meg does her own designs, and yes, she drew me a needle turn applique design, and um, I cannot wait to get started on it. Uh, as soon as I'm done with my Maggie pattern, this will be my next, and um, this is a hand-drawn design. We've got um, a moon, some stars, a beautiful house. We've got a couple a sheep and a tree and a grassy knoll and a little shed. It is fabulous. This gal is so talented. Holy guacamole. She also sent all the fabric to go with it. Every one of them is marked for what piece it should be. And look at these colors, guys. Is this out of this world or what? This lady needs to do a floss tube. She's, she's amazing.
and in here is not only um, four pages of instructions, but freezer paper, all the pieces um, drawn on the freezer paper for me. Amazing. Talk about a kit. Holy moly. This is out of this world. I cannot wait to get started. As I said, as soon as I finish the Maggie project, um, I will be embarking on that. Can't wait to show you guys how this is going to come out. I think it's just going to be adorable. So cannot wait. Um, Meg, I'm not sure what to say. I'm just, again, overwhelmed. Thank you so, so much. Um, this is going to be a load of fun. Um, and one of these days we need to get together in person because we don't live all that far from each other. Um, so maybe maybe somewhere halfway in between we can meet. Uh, but just love it. Just love everything. All right. Um, and then um, getting right here to the end, I have a, um, a finish. And this is from my Ooh La La book, uh, Blackbird Designs, of course. And this is the Mon Petit exemplar. They show the original little um, sampler, and then they show it as a ditty bag. That's what I call it. They call it a sewing bag. I call it a ditty bag. And I've never made one before. So I took up the challenge, and here we are, guys. It's a little ditty bag. Um, I end up making a boo-boo. I didn't put the bottom of the sampler closer um, as close as it should have been to the bottom of the bag. So instead, I just added a red button, and I think it looks great. So boo-boos, you can turn, what is that, what is that saying? Um, lemons into lemonade, and that's what I did. I used some, um, uh, what is this called? This ribbon, I can't think of the name of it now. I'm blanking on the ribbon. Um, ah. I'm terrible. I, I can't think of the name of this ribbon, but I have a huge roll of it uh, that I'd ordered online. And then um, the bag lining's kind of a red, kind of florally type pattern uh, for the bag lining. Um, this was quite easy to do, and I'm thinking the hollyhocks will be another little ditty bag because I had so much fun making this. So, um, so that's my finish for this time around. And then the very last thing is a uh, giveaway. I have four patterns um, that I'd like to give away. These are patterns I got off the um, off of the uh, oh my goodness the clearance bins <laughs> at Needle and Thread in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So the first one I've heard a lot of people say that they collect these patterns. So when I saw it, I I nabbed it, hoping somebody out there might like it. Um, this is a sheepish design. And it's Scarecrow Wabbit. Scarecrow Wabbit. It looks like it's a little pillow pin keep along with a little scissor fob. And that would be probably perfect for some fall stitching and pretty quick stitching. So if anybody out there is interested in this, please put in your comment, sheepish, sheepish. All right, and the next one is a shepherd's bush. Um, I know a lot of people stitch the um, shepherd's book stockings, and this has to be an older one. Um, I thought I had seen the copyright on this. Yep, 1996, and um, I, I'm assuming this is one that was made for one of the owners, because I think it's Tina and Terry, and this one says Terry. So maybe this was one of the originals. So if somebody loves Shepherd's Book stockings um, and would like this pattern, um, please put stocking in your um, comment. Stocking. Uh, the next one is a Rosewood Manor. And um, again, this is probably an older one. I don't know if there's a date on this one. 2001. Um, so this one's 10 years old. Uh, if there's anybody out there very patriotic, uh, likes to stitch words, this is the Star Sting Star Spangled Banner. Star Spangled Banner. So there we are, Star Spangled Banner. And in the comments, please put banner uh, for that one. And then the last one is by Bent Creek. And um, this one I picked up uh, because um, I'm a sampler girl. This one is a very simple sampler. I'm sure you can do lots of different things with this, different colorways, different finishes would stitch up super quick. This is called the Everyday Sampler by Bent Creek. 
everyday sampler and for this one just put sampler in the comments if it's something you're interested in so there you go um, this completes my floss tube for today uh, lots of fun stuff to share um, thank you to everybody again for your support um, I appreciate um, all the encouragement you give and um, Please keep those comments coming. I also love interacting on Instagram and seeing all the things you create, which inspire me to create. I have to be honest, this morning I was watching um, Mama Loves GB, I think it's called, and um, she had shown these little hat pins that she um, made into little counting pins um, using little spools, which I thought was awesome. Oh, I might have to give it a try. We'll see too many too many crafty things not enough time right guys so i'm wishing you lots of crafty time and i can't wait to see what you create uh, stay safe and stay well until next time see you later guys bye